Today, we continue our journey through Lent as a people of prayer and contemplation, as a people who question and want to know more. I welcome you to this week's edition of Connect. And for those of you who are just joining us for the first or second time, this is a break midweek for us as a people of faith. Connect is a chance for us to pause and reflect on who we are as we live our lives. Now, you may know this, but if you don't, we are in the midst of a season called Lent. And Lent is a season where we pray and we fast, where we repent and we reflect on who we are as Christians, and we walk towards that great epic week, that holy week. Last week in our Connect service, I talked a little bit about how we might grow spiritually in that time. And I've mentioned a few of those things, like fasting and prayer. I myself have taken on a fast, and I ask you tonight, what have you taken on? What is it that you are going to do in this season that will bring you closer to God, closer to your faith? Now, when you choose this activity, you need to remember that you are setting aside a part of your own life in service of the Lord. And we deny ourselves in this time in order to truly live in the way this is a good thing. It's not an easy thing, but it is a good thing. And you're not supposed to be perfect at it, so don't fret if you've had a few missteps along the way. There's a reason this is called a practice of faith. It is not a perfect. It is a practice. Let us take a moment now to continue our practice of faith as we meet our God in prayer. Gracious and holy God, giver of life and breath, of hope and wonder, we come before you today in hopeful expectation that you might meet us in this moment, that you might open our hearts and minds, that you might grant us a new piece of wisdom or share some insight into your word that will help us be sustained throughout the coming week. Use this time that we have set aside to be with you, to restore us, to redeem us, to reclaim us as your children. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week we talked a little bit about how we need to appreciate life and the fact that it ends. And this week I want to talk about life and the fact that we get to live it. So I was thinking, what are the signs of life that are happening around you right now? For me, I walked out of the door this morning and I heard birds singing. This was a glorious gift. Then I heard news that the trees were running and sap is coming. That is good news, for that means spring is on the horizon. These things today filled my heart with joy, that along with the melting snow. I mean, it has been beautiful where I live. In many ways, it feels as though we're turning a corner, that the long winter is ending and spring will soon come. There is more light in our world. There is hope once more. As delighted as we get watching the world come to life once more, God is even more excited to see the same things happening in us. 
And we are more than just a Netflix binge for God. He's not sitting on a couch somewhere, eating popcorn, watching things happen. God is invested in our lives. God wants good things for us. We are told in Romans 8, 28, that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. God is right there with us as we live, rooting for, working right alongside us. Now, I acknowledge there are days where this is easier to accept. Some days it's hard. We feel insignificant or unimportant. Sometimes we're so overwhelmed by what is happening in life, we think we are in it alone. But I want to read today from a passage that reminds us of just how well God knows us. Sometimes another person's memory or recognition of what is happening is all it takes for us to feel the same way too. We're going to turn now to the Psalms, Psalm 139 specifically, and we're going to begin our reading today at the first verse. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day For darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Here ends our reading. Our psalmist knows that he is loved. He knows this because he himself has known God. On Sunday I talked about relationship and how important it is to God. And here we see just how important it is to the psalmist as well. After all, good relationship is only good if it goes both ways. In Psalm 139, we hear of a person rejoicing in both how he is known and also what he knows about God. And he rejoices in the gift of life and recognizes that it came from God. Our lives are gifts as well. They were breathed into creation by a God who delighted in us. We were spoken into existence and created in the mind of God for a reason. God invests in each one of us and covers us with grace and makes it known that we are part of his family. The psalmist seems to know this full well. Part of our spiritual exercises in the season of Lent are taken on as a way to help us remember this relationship and honor it as a priority in our lives. They help us see just how connected we are both to God and to each other. How much a part of the family of God we really have become. When we fast, when we pray, when we reflect or read, 
when we serve, when we live in this way, we are accepting our place at the table. We are identifying ourselves as part of the big family of God. And we are embracing the gift of life that we have been given and doing good with it in the way God wants us to. Life and growth, challenge and change are all part of the journey of faith. And as we journey, we must not forget that the one who made us wants to know us. And he wanted to know us so much that he sent his son to connect with us. To show us that he was in it, walking alongside us, and willing to go the distance to make sure that we were never again separated from the love of God. Now last week we talked a bit about death, and this week I want you to remember life. How your life is a gift from God and you were created for a reason. God loves you and delights in you. Embrace your life with gratitude and courage. I know it isn't always easy, but it is always worth it. So go out and live the life you were born to live. And remember, you weren't born to do this alone. God will be with you on this journey. And you are part of a family, a big family of God. You belong. Let us pray. Loving God, over the coming days and weeks, we remember your investment in us. As we hear the stories of Jesus once more, we ask that you use this time to open our eyes to your will for our lives. Help us see with greater clarity your desire for this world and give us the passion and courage, the stamina we need to pursue that desire with all our hearts. Remind us, Lord, as we live of the great gift that is our lives. Help us to find ways to rejoice in each day And let one of those ways be in you. Lead us, Lord. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we leave our time of worship tonight, go in peace. Go in love. Go in joy and serve the Lord as you live. As we leave tonight, I would like to take this time to thank Mr. Chris McCloskey for his contribution as he plays us out with O Sacred Head, Sore Wounded. <laughs>